Freedom is a powerful engine, and African Americans began defining and living their lives with new freedom, finding work, getting married, searching for members of their families who had been sold to who knows where. And yet, slavery's death did not automatically confer any positive rights or liberty upon African Americans. It only liberated them from the ownership of a master, eliminated at the same time the latter's motive for self-interested benevolence, which enslaved people had tried to use to their benefit. Whatever meaning the 13th Amendment may have had in January 1865, the White South's reaction to the end of slavery changed the dynamics. The southern states, still controlled by the antebellum and Confederate leasers, busily enacted thinly disguised versions of slavery, known as black codes. These systems gave white employees the power to administer moderate corporal chastisement, meaning whipping. Free people could not travel without a pass. In most states, it became nearly impossible for African Americans to even rent land to market their own produce or to seek effective legal address against whites. Blacks were not allowed to possess knives or firearms, to buy or sell alcohol, or to preach the gospel without license from white authorities. More egregious regulations were mere replicas of slave code clauses with the substitution of freedmen for slaves. In New Orleans, the code declared, free people of color ought to never insult or strike white people nor presume to think of themselves equal to the white. This system would bind blacks to the land, impoverished, uneducated, disfranchised, and unorganized in perpetuity. The laws took freedom from whites also. White people who might think differently were kept in line by a section of this code that made it a crime for any of them to associate with any black person on terms of equality. It was this southern white reaction against the freed slaves that steadily and rapidly, though not unanimously, propelled the nation toward equality.